Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today you join me for some exclusive access to visit the holy halls of Mercedes-Benz. These are the storage halls for Mercedes-Benz Classic where we're talking one-offs, concepts, the finest road cars, the SLL Sterling Moss for example, championship winning race cars, that's Lewis Hamilton's Formula One World Championship car from 2015. There's a lot to see. This place is normally completely hidden away from sight but we've got the opportunity today to take a look around during some filming that I've been doing with Mercedes and with YouTube in VR 180. I want to show you a little bit more though so let's take a look around here and another hall as well the holy halls of Mercedes-Benz. This location is so top secret that I have never previously even seen a photograph of the cars that are stored within. The Mercedes-Benz collection consists of over a thousand cars in total, stored between 11 different halls. This one we're going to explore, also the one just over there with more Formula One cars and their entire history of DTM as well. But we are talking a big variety. For example, concepts that were displayed at motor shows. Then we have engineering and development cars in their full camouflage. There are one-offs that never made it through to production. Then some of the finest road cars they've ever made, the SLR Sterling Moss sitting in a lineup of race cars, DTM cars, GT3s, the SLR 722 GT, and of course, some of the Formula One cars. And this right here in front of us is Lewis Hamilton's car from 2015, the championship winning car. That was his third year of winning the world title, the second of course for the Mercedes AMG Patronus team of what has now become six in total. But all of the vehicles here, the Formula One cars and everything else, are fully drained of their fluids, their oils, uh, their fuel and stored with a wax so they can go back through the workshop and be put through into running order but being stored and preserved for the future to go in and out of the museum to be displayed on occasion and well for us to have this special exclusive opportunity to look today. So we've started with an F1 winner. That is basically priceless but then next to it are two completely different cars going back to the 70s and 80s we have some of what they called the experimental safety vehicles so this was well a concept of the time based on the already incredibly safe s-class what this did was test and I get custom I guess get customer feedback on how these things might work because this all around the outside is actually rubber so the idea there is to see whether that would offer additional safety for pedestrians for anything that might be impacted by the vehicle by having a, uh, a soft and squishy rubber all around the outside and also if we just come and have a quick look at the interior as well you've also got those kind of cocooning seats if you can just see through the windows to offer additional protection inside as well so that's a concept from back then similarly alongside it then we've got a concept for the new a-class cars that were shown at motor shows for example this back in 2003 the vision at cls was shown before the cls model itself was actually introduced which of course then is now in its third generation we come past one of the cars from the history between McLaren and Mercedes-Benz when Mercedes were making the motors, the engines that went into the McLaren Formula One cars as well. And in fact, that was when Mercedes returned to F1 in 94 with the Sauber car after obviously their very, very esteemed history back in the 50s, for example. If we keep coming through more concepts, I think this was called the F500 mine. Unusual thing. You've even got a kind of spire up the center and a complete glass roof. That never became a full production car. In fact, let me just look at some of these pretty unusual things these are the r class i always had i always thought when it came out the r63 was such a cool kind of family car because it didn't look like it could ever be the performance weapon that it was these became the b class these are called the compact sports tourer this is the grand sports tourer then we've got up here what became the first generation of the SLK. I was seven when this came out actually, but I do remember it because I was always a big fan of the SLK. I thought it was a very cool car. Of course, the first with the folding hardtop roof mechanism. What do we have at the end? The coupe study from Geneva 1993 on the CLK uh, coupe style. Of course, the SLR Roadster, another stunning road car, one of the flagships. And then here, a second actually, 722 GT. There are two of them in here. Look at this thing. It was basically introduced to potentially become the SLR trophy customer a program to go and race SLRs and you look at it it's like the road car look at that side exit exhaust look at the aggression of all of those louvres down the edges and over the wheel arches that thing looks insanely cool behind we have a line of different A-class models and in fact check this out this is a Hakkinen tribute car signed I think by Mika and also by David Coulthard on the bonnet of it actually covered up protected and preserved here 
with film over the top, but a limited edition A-Class, the full line of the A-Class models. This, this was Bernd Schneider's final DTM championship car, 2006, the C-Class DTM. There's a whole line of DTM cars we're gonna go and see in a moment, but of course, Mercedes had a pretty dominating period in DTM as well over 30 years. This is quite interesting. This is a car for the AMG Driving Academy out on snow. So it's actually raised up. You've got the bright lights around the front, the bumper protection as well. And I mean, the Driving Academy is a, is a big thing that they run. So coming through, what else do we have around here? More A-classes, more uh, experimental safety vehicles. Let's touch on this, the 190E compact car. So you might be familiar with the 190E. I've uh, actually had an opportunity to drive a 190E race car before, which was a stunning chance to do. But this was basically introduced, not officially, but with the potential to go and take part in something like Group B rallying before it was eventually canceled. So the idea was to have a 190E that is substantially shorter, and basically kind of like a hatchback, which um, maybe the early adoptings of the A-class models potentially. In any case, I didn't know that existed before I came here. Then right in front of it, the SLR Sterling Moss. They only made 75, the tribute back to Sir Sterling Moss, that incredible long bonnet, open cabin, this cover that you can store away inside the rear, inside the boot space if you want to drive it as a one-seater, but paying tribute back to Sterling Moss's successes in the Millimilia, reminiscent of the cars from back in the 50s when he broke the record-setting time, and, well, I felt a little bit in his shoes almost, taking part in the Millimilia as it's run now, uh, last year, driving in a 300 SL, but this, I just think everything about it is super cool. Those side exit exhausts, there are 75 lucky owners of those around the world. Very, very, very rare things. And this is actually, to look at it a little bit closer, this is the test mule for the latest generation SLK. So if you look um, around, for example, it has this whole new bodywork all around it to conceal and hide what's behind. It's a fairly early stage, so it's engineering and chassis style development. For example, the headlights, look at these, there are just LEDs inside, those are far from finalised. Things like the towing eye attached, just enough ventilation around the front to let all the cooling in and make sure everything works, but completely disguised from prying eyes so that nobody would know what they're actually looking at. Then of course that's the CLA concept, familiar in shape and style to the CLA model, more Formula One cars, but really and truly, that is a breathtaking haul to take in and just be able to look around. But let's head to take a look at the second side of this venue also. And remember, this is just a small part of what is in the entire collection. But in here, we're looking at a history of DTM and of Formula One cars. If you're into your Formula One cars, take a look at these. Some of them are the cars that raced, some of them are the show cars, and you can spot some of the differences between them. Of course, we've got one of the older cars from Mercedes-Benz and McLaren back in that period as well. What else do we have looking around? Well, the Silver Arrows in all their glory from the different years. The numbers 44, Lewis Hamilton's cars. And then take your eyes over this. The history of 30 years for Mercedes racing in the DTM. We've got at the front their very first car, back I think from 88, competed in 89, that was their first year, all the way through to the car at the very back, just over there was the final car from 2018. But along the way, they had a lot of success. This was always, I think, my kind of era. I remember that livery an awful lot. In fact, I had an RC car that was exactly that. Love that thing used to blast around with it all the time. This was DiResta's winning car in 2010. That was Paffitt's winning car in 2005. You get a small idea for what is in store here and the different cars that are on display. This one without a livery was a test car, um, an original introduction of, of that year. But these, well, you can see how the designs have changed, how they've become, well, based on the CLKs and the, the C-classes of the more modern era. But it went from this all the way through to the newer cars, and an amazing success story for Mercedes in the DTM. I tell you what though, this is just the modern history. Of course, for Mercedes it goes back 133 years to 1886 since the patent motor wagon. Along the lines you had all the W154s, the race cars, the 300 SLs, 300 SLRs and plenty more that Mercedes have on display in the museum and at various other locations. But to see this, to be here as part of the Holy Halls and to see some of the concepts, these are things that you never normally get to see with your own eyes. I can't say thank you to Mercedes-Benz and Mercedes-Benz Classic enough 
for the opportunity to do this, to be here and to be able to share some of these with you. I mean, we are literally talking, well, one of my favorite cars in the form of the SLR Sterling Moss, ultimate collector's piece, to these one-off concepts. And it's when you start looking at some of the interiors of them is when you really notice and take these in. Because, I mean, we're talking cars, I think this one came out in 2003. If you have a look at the interior of it, this was really looking forwards to the future. There's a laptop over there, the steering wheel slides from position or to be slightly offset, glass panoramic roofs, and so many things that didn't become in production vehicles until quite a long way down the line after that. In any case though, just, uh, just gonna squeeze here between some Formula One cars. I don't think I really mentioned the SLS AMG GT3. I think this thing is such a beast. And in fact, back in 2012, they dominated the grid. The GT3 uh, version of the SLS AMG was basically victorious in many of the 24 hour races, the Nürburgring, Dubai, Sebring, you name it. And this car, as you can see, is still covered with its post race markings and being a bit worn out from Dubai. So the dust and dirt from the Dubai racetrack, a little bit different to the pristinely clean 2006 DTM that sits alongside it. In any case though, what a place to be able to explore. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of these and being able to have a glimpse around. Of course, there's more to see if you'd like to check out the video as well that we've shot with Mercedes and with YouTube in VR180 to immerse you a little bit more in this experience. But for today, this is a crazy, crazy place. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, but that is it for this time and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.